Professor of Education at the University of Newcastle, John Vachetti. John, we probably should really just let's just just go full circle and turn into a movie, say because that's what we kind of talk about when we're not on. Good morning. That's right. Good morning, Mark. And Christmas and New Year was good for you. I know you're at the cinema a lot. Yeah. It was great. The weather's been good the last couple of weeks, so we've even had a, a late holiday kind of opportunity to take advantage of how beautiful it is around here. Absolutely. All right, back into it. The, the school year has kicked off uh, around the world again, I guess, here in New South Wales and the Hunter. 2021, will give us the lay of the land. What are you seeing um, play out in the, in the education world over the next little while, John? Yeah, well, let me give this in two parts, Mark. Sort of the good news and then the maybe we have to be watching a little bit out the window. We like good news, so we can start there. (laughs) So around our region, there's a couple of brand new schools that have taken on board a lot of the ideas we've talked about over the years here at 2NUR. Uh, In Madawi, there's a Catherine Macaulay Catholic College that just opened its doors. They've been planning it for a year and a half. And actually, it's a physically beautiful spot. You know, that area of Madawi mm. that our listeners are in. It's just gorgeous. It just I actually drove past there, uh, was it last weekend? And it, it just seems like, oh, that, that's, that school's there now. It's, this is looking pretty good. And it's a new age concept in what a school design would look like to build in these spaces that are about promoting active learning, not just classrooms with rows and desks that are all lined up to watch a teacher. They're really about active inspired learning and the physical layout of the school is one where you feel really privileged to go there and Mm. students are really motivated to be sort of engaged in this 21st century kind of learning that we've been talking about getting actively involved in critical thinking and problem solving and collaboration and gearing themselves up for the jobs of the future along with basic literacy and numeracy stuff. Have you given them your notes over the last 12 we've, months? Is that what's happened? Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've met with them, but they've also they've contacted <laughs> gurus around the world, and they've yeah. really built a school, I think, that the parents have chosen well. It's led really well by a wonderful principal, and I think it's an exciting new branch of progressive education, really honouring a lot of what we've been talking about. I guess, John, as, as anything, uh, the C word change, right? And, and as these schools start to come out, uh, I guess it's still going to be a while before we see this right across the board and some may take that as a shame some traditionalists will be will be thankful yes and i think that the tension that we have in these new school structures is that the many people leave schools should just focus on what the basics are we'll cover that in just a second Mm -hmm. but if you go this direction are we sure we're providing our kids the best education so there's lots of competition in the various sectors the independent the catholic the government schools for each school having its own kind of brand of the kind of learning, giving parents lots of choice, but also confusion. In Armadale, they've merged two schools in a regional concept and built this amazing campus. I sent you the link and our Mm. listeners could get online and look at this massive campus, Mark. It's gorgeous. It looks like a uni or a TAFE campus that was just built out of the gorgeous countryside in Armadale. But what they've done there, they technically don't have classrooms. Now, they do. They just don't call them that because it looks so different. What it does does is it gives teachers a chance to work together and use the space flexibly. One day might be a traditional kind of lecture, but most days there's going to be the opportunity to use that space to make and build and engage and to video and to present and to exhibit action verbs. And then time out, let's move it back around. Let's have some chairs and tables that we'll be sitting in. We'll be doing some writing. So instead of landlocked classrooms that look like the ones we went to, flexible space that allows lots of opportunities for performance, lots of action, lots of technical skill development. It's a beautiful spot as well. So it shows an investment in a different kind of thinking about schooling. I guess the idea of changing it up a little bit, uh, sort of breaking down boredom as well and allowing for everybody's learning style when we're all a little bit different there. Yeah. So I guess over a uh, amount of time, John, we'll see the data on this and, and we'll see if, if it is the way to go. And, and uh, hopefully if those that are on that side, we'll, we'll see that roll out a little bit further. All right, let's get into the <laughs> shaky news, the so, good maybe so not. So our Premier and Minister for Education are both encouraging the department in particular to shy away from those same innovations and to really focus back on traditional basics, basic literacy, basic numeracy, and the ways in which we measure those, the NAPLAN, the HSC, and the ranking system of ATAR. And so principals are seeing this tension now between these ideas are where we're heading, but we're being pulled back, almost through a wormhole back 20 years. So I think we'll see different schools responding to how they want to broadcast how creative and innovative they are. Because in every school that our listeners have just dropped their kids off at, amazingly dynamic kinds of learning are taking place. But is that, like, are we on the hush-hush with that? Or is that part of our brand? Is that what we're out there for? The premise of this, in my mind, has to be, and I think we have to confront this 
and I have the privilege of being able to when others in the system don't, is we can't afford average anymore. We used to think a C or a credit was good enough, but a machine can do credit. What we have to get every kid to do with the passions and the wonderful mm -hmm. ways in which they take on their understanding of the world is to find what they're actually brilliant at and go for it and help them develop that. Change it if it turns out they're not. So what we have to do is get everybody above average. Otherwise, in the next 10 years, as these kids move forward through school and enter a workplace, there won't be anything for them to do. There won't be, there won't be a need for a taxi driver. They'll all be driverless and use that example in everything other part of our society. So part of this is the realistic nature of developing human capacity. But most of it is, what are we going to get these kids to do unless they're really reaching for the stars? And then if they hit the moon, it'll be okay as well. <laughs> That's a bonus. This is, this is really, really important, life-changing stuff. Because if kids, we just settle for average, we're going to left with being obsolete in the global economy. And that puts Australia behind. We have a potential to be at the driving force of this, given our success with COVID and our success generally as a very intelligent people. All right, just very quickly on this, John, before we let you go today, um, with these two um, competing ideas, do you think there's a, a in the background there is a bit of an ideological war happening? And that might be an overstretch, but you get where I'm going. It totally is. And it is played out then in different ways through the media and different forms of the media and who own them. There's the Rupert Murdoch media, and then there's the more progressive media, and they tend to latch onto these things and make them all look like troubles brewing. Somewhere in the middle is probably always the right answer in a compromised world, and that is the basic skills are crucial, but it's not good enough. So I call it yes and. Instead of yes but, it's yes. Yes, we'll do the basic skills, and we're doing so much more. That's what the schools that are really uh, rocking are beginning to do. These two new schools are perfect living examples of an investment for the future, not the past. All right, John, I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that. No, we'll probably hear a lot more about that as 2021 rolls on. Good to see you, mate. We'll uh, catch up with you in a fortnight. Yeah, great to see you, Mark. Our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti. To NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.